Okay, so in this episode, I want to take a deeper look at objects. So here's a quick recap. We have the new project dialog. We can browse here for path. And I have docked here in my um, pick mesh here options dialog, a uh, location where I have a few objects. I want to take this snail asset here and open it. And as we know in this introduction, I want to add here to non-commercial. So I'm just going to take nuke default. We have another uh, set of tabs here, channels. I didn't really go through this the last time. When you load something, you can actually create here different channels as a, kind of like a preset uh, setup. Uh, you can also choose a light if you want to from, from this list here. You can obviously choose other lights when you get in there. So yeah, let's just hit create new projects when we have this created and take a look here. Okay, so this is kind of where we left off. I want to take a look here at this objects tab here. So I'm just gonna uh, take everything of this away so we can just focus on this. I'm gonna dock it there. So this is something you can do. You can uh, dock tabs. You can even dock them on this side uh, or to the bottom if you get it uh, or the top. I can go more in depth in, in that procedure later on. So we can see here we can subdivide the object. We can do it from here as well. We, in the our last episode, I did it from this menu up here. I'm going to subdivide it once here. Okay. And we can see here zero and one. We can see it flips, gets a bit subdivided. Down here, we have something called geo channel. So this is something kind of related to objects. A geo channel is essentially paint data stored onto the geometry itself. And that means that if you do procedural workflows, where you want to access, for example, ambient occlusion, curvature, you can store that onto the geometry. This means that you can then in turn uh, use something called geo channel nodes and access this data more easily, for example, in materials or uh, gizmos. I'm going to show this in a bit here. I just want to point this out here. So how do we go about to for example, update objects. We can go in here and say right click, add version. I'm just gonna take a totally different object so we can see here. So I have this rolling teapot from Pixar. You get a dialogue here. Uh, essentially, if this geometry didn't have UVs, it will try to apply PTEX. In my case, I'm just gonna hit OK because it has used UVs. Nothing happened. And that's because we are essentially still on our object version, but there's a drop down here. We can now actually choose that other object. So this is how you can update. For example, let's say that your geometry has an UV update. You don't load a new UV set because Mari ingest geometry. It makes it internal. The only option is to import new versions. You can see a rolling teapot. So yeah, that's uh, how you can load different versions. So you can then, okay, yeah. So my snail asset is obviously very small and the teapot is super large. Here in the objects tab, you have something called ambient occlusion. So this is kind of related to objects. If I hit this one, you see there's here in the corner, you, use, you start to calculate something. After a while, you see they flipped, something happened there. And if I go into flat shaded mode, what we can do here, if I um, go to my no graph, I'm just gonna quickly jump into the no graph and hit tab and say ambient occlusion. We can see here, I'm just gonna turn off my LUT. That, yeah, we have ambient occlusion here. But you see that it's it's a bit patchy. So this one is not a ray traced ambient occlusion. It used the geometry. I can demonstrate this by setting here. You see here subdiv level one. If I take this sub -div level zero, you see I completely lost the ambient occlusion. If I now go into objects and rebake my ambient occlusion, now when I have in level zero, you see I get a nasty artifacts. I go to level one. I also have an, an ambient occlusion geometry baked. So this ambient occlusion calculation is depending on how dense your object is. So sometimes you can use this and then it can work. But this is not like, uh, for example, if you would have a third party bake where you uh, bake ambient occlusion and it's ray traced and it, it looks beautiful. 
what we can do if we want to, we can go into subdivide here and say, let's say that we want to have three levels. I'm just going to subdivide this object th three times now instead, and then recalculate the ambient occlusion. And we can see the how that works. So there's the subdivision has gone through. Now I'm just going to go into ambient occlusion calculation. Once it's baked here, let's go through here. We have level zero. One, we can see it becomes a bit better. Level three, and it's even better. This is a way to use ambient occlusion, kind of like a uh, geometry based ambient occlusion rather than a traced. And in some cases, uh, this can work. Somewhat related is there is a, also a geometry based curvature. This one is actually pretty okay sometimes for uh, some workflows. I tab and type curvature and I get this node. I'm just going to uh, now take this down over this. You see here, I select this scale parameter and I'm hitting the left mouse button and just drag upwards, up and down, it kind of uh, increments this slider here. So you can see here, you can start to use some curvature. It, it's very sensitive. Uh, there's a curvature you can also select if you want to have convex concavity or convexity like so or both or curvature like so now we know that this is also related to geometry but now let's take a look at this geo channel before wrap geo channels you can import paint into a geo channel and they live here under the geometry let's say that uh, the easiest way to actually create a geo channel, in my opinion, is to use a bake point. Bake point is something that we will cover more in depth in upcoming episodes, because it's a very crucial ingredient of uh, maintaining complexity. I'm just going to touch this now. I'm just going to create a bake point here. Uh, let's say that we, we want to bake this ambient occlusion out. Essentially here, I want to bake this level three ambient occlusion, but I want to reuse it at level zero. So I can do that essentially. If I go here, hook this ambient occlusion up to my bake point, I hit bake here. And once it's baked down, I'm going to go here to my export. I'm, I'm going to go here to my geo channel and say AO. And then hit export bake to geo channel. And let's say that we um, let's now actually here go to my objects and go to level zero. And we see here we now get this one. But fear not, if I now drop down the geo channel node, I double click on it and I go here to this drop down and say channels, I can say AO. And now if I hit the one button on this node, I'm now essentially using a uh, geo channel paint data stored onto the geometry. And we can see here when I added this geo channel onto the big point, we actually got another channel here called AO. This geo channel one is a essentially a empty geo channel. So I could essentially just here remove it by this minus button here because it's not in use. So you essentially can store anything. We can also store um, other things. Let's say that we want to have a, a, a cloud. I just create another big point, set this to cloud uh, to scalar. I'm going to cover scalar and paint data in upcoming episodes. Let's rebake this one and say we have a cloud geo channel like so. And let's create the geo channel cloud and look into this one. The limitation with geo channels that lives on to the geometry is it's static data. For example, if I would go in here in, in my cloud node, go in and update it here, you can see it becomes red. And that means it's out of uh, essentially out of sync this bake point. If I look here at my original cloud, I have now changed the size parameter. And we can see this one, it doesn't match. Uh, if I go back to my cloud node here you see it's the original state so it essentially takes the bake data so i can update this uh, so what i can do is to go in here uh, and say um, bake again here and it will actually update and send the data to the geo channel that lives here onto the object ideally you would import for example bait ambient occlusion curvature id maps 
set them up here and you can always have these handy in your gizmos and uh, procedurals. This is how I use it because there is another more dedicated uh, node that we're going to cover later that actually broadcasts live data into it. But this is an optimized way for static data.